All right, welcome back to another Black City Coffee Vlog. In this video, we're gonna taste and quality check um, my coffees <laughs> because I wanna send these if they're good enough, if I deem them good enough. You know what, even if they're not good enough, I'll still send them. And where they're going is to um, Derek De La Paz, shout out. Back in the coffee game, really excited for you. Zozio, Zozio? Zozio Coffee and Provisions. I'll link it up in the description. Um, been really enjoying his story. Was one of my favorite content creators, roasters to learn from when I started roasting. It was my style of learning how to roast. I really prefer that style of teacher and mentor. Um, and if you listen, if you're willing to listen through his long explanations, um, I think you can really pick up a lot of gems. And this is all personal preference. You should find the teacher that speaks to you, speaks your language, you know. Um, but yeah, he's one of the few, um, and still one of the few that are out there really being, I think, very transparent, very honest about what he does um, at the roaster. So I don't know if he'll post his, like, roast curves like I do. Uh, I'd love to see his roast curves, but I want to send him some coffee. I just bought some of his coffee, so I can't wait to cup that for vlog, uh, for the channel, but um, I wanna send him these. And it'll be my <laughs> my true like um, proof to myself that I've overcome my own imposter syndrome, my own like sort of anxiety and like timidness about coffee and, and removing myself from it and just going like, hey, as a roaster talking to another roaster, um, what do you think? How can I improve, da da da, right? So that's what I want to do. And uh, so I'm gonna cup these. I'm gonna take copious notes on them, send some samples to Derek, and um, he's over in uh, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, and then see, I know he's super busy. I know he's not gonna watch this. <laughs> so um, let's see what he says. All right, let's get some water in these guys. Well, first, sniffy sniff. Only a day's rest, so I'm going to have to um, remember what my coffees taste like, where they're going to land, meaning like after so many days of rest, where does it usually end up tasting? And I should know that because I've roasted this coffee many times, right? So even though I'm uh, cupping this natural processed coffee where I should be waiting about 48 hours, even though I'm waiting only maybe probably less than 24 hours, um, I just have to keep that in mind. Um, and I won't give him my notes. I'll just take my own notes and then see what he says. Because, <laughs> of course, we don't want to influence or um, introduce any bias. So what I'll do, I think, is maybe I'll, um, I'll let him cup it blind. So he can have, you know, just see where his, like, palate is at. And I think he'll have fun with that. Um, okay, so one. This is how we count. One, two, three, four. Like that. Um, nose and then flavor um, and I'm gonna take simplified notes for myself so nose and still Um, the note that comes to me is drunk cherry. Okay, next. Um. Grilled meats. Grilled peach. Tingy, BBQ sauce. Mm. 
Raisin bread. Okay. Water. Oh. Just push these forward because I needed to get a picture of them. We have some darker coffees on the table. Probably need to have an extra wash station. Sucks being short, man. Okay. Ooh, hot, ooh, hot. Ooh, hot. Ooh, hot. Okay. So, I know what this one is. Might know what these are. I don't remember. <laughs> so I'm trying to do it blind too. So I'm not so biased. Mm, even though I just said I kind of have to know where these coffees are going to land based on the fact that they're, uh, I think all of them are naturals. Yeah, all of them are naturals. So it should have been, it should have been cupped tomorrow for a proper day's rest. But um, it'll be a good test of like where I think these are going to land and understand that the well gets sweeter. I will link all of their profiles right now in the description. They weren't perfect. Um, happens. So I'm just going to shoot from the hip, send it out to Derek, and then hopefully get some feedback that I can learn from and then share with y'all. Uh, okay. So now we're going to wait for these to cool around only four minutes. So we'll see you back here at around eight minutes. Record. All right. We're back. Test. Yeah. Okay. All right. 11 minutes in. Good enough for me. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. We still need this. Number one. Okay. So what I meant by predicting where your coffee is going to land or knowing that your coffee is going to land somewhere else, I'm tasting that here. So it still tastes a little sharp, still tastes a little harsh like it hasn't like, I don't know what happens to the coffee. I forgot. I've read about it, but it'll kind of like dissipate. <laughs> it'll sort of like round out, sweeten, because um, I know this coffee shouldn't taste this harsh. <laughs> 
sort of um, astringent to it and not sweet. So not, not there yet, but I have to remember that it has to rest and that coffee changes and there's a prime time for each individual coffee um, depending on its process and its roast level that it will taste the best and <laughs> and uh, how it's stored too as it gets there as it ages as it rests is a uh, is a factor as well so there's all kinds of factors that can come into um, how a coffee can taste its best as it rests um, and as it ages and that's the fun part that you get to find out <laughs> all right number two Yeah, um, thin, you know, needs to rest a little bit more. I wonder if this was kind of moot, kind of tasting. All right, let's see if I can tell what these are too. I already know this one, this one's obvious. Very treasure. This one was what? Mm -hmm. I think it's Tiger Claw. It has that apricot thing going on. This has that classic decaf taste. So I think that's Honey Pop. This one's pretty sweet. There's a um, astringency to it, like in black tea, where black tea is steeped too long. Um, and it's definitely more roastier. There's a roastier flavor on the finish for sure. So I'll call this one Mr. Koto Medium. Mr. Koto from Guatemala Medium. All right. Um, generally really good, nice, roasty. If you like a boulder cup, go with Mr. Koto. Honey pot, decaf. This is a mountain water decaf, organic. Tiger claw, I taste that apricot in there. That's my cue. And then buried treasure, Costa Rica, natural. Um, let's taste this again. That's time, more, more time to cool. Mm. Yeah, it's even, it's getting sweeter and it's getting sweeter as it cools. So that's a good sign. So I know it's gonna land in a nice sweet place, um, sort of like drunk cherry sort of taste um, uh, later on as it keeps resting. So I'm confident in all of these that I wanna send these to Derek over at Jojo Coffee and um, see what he thinks. <laughs> okay, let's see what I was, if I was right. Okay, lined up right here. Number one, buried treasure. Number two, Tiger Claw, yes. Number three, Honey Pot, yes. And number four, Mr. Koto. So cool, yay. <laughs> I know and understand my coffees. That's good. I think that's a good thing um, to be able to taste it. And and the, the practice of that is not just going, yay, I can name my coffees. It's more like, can I catalog what I'm tasting? When I taste it again, do I recognize it? Okay, okay. All right, I'm gonna pack these up. I'm gonna send them off. And uh, I actually don't feel weird about it. I'm like excited. That's the, that's the difference in uh, seeing if you've gotten over your <laughs> imposter syndrome, whatever you wanna call that, such a dumb name. Um, feeling excited versus feeling anxious. Sometimes you can be both for sure, but maybe more excited than anxious for sure. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.